Yowski, uh, apologies for the voiceover intro, but uh, as is usually the case, the plan didn't survive the first contact with the enemy, and the enemy is reality. So quickly before we jump into the actual segments, uh, three topics. Uh, first one, so this thing here is different uh, in terms of usually I film stuff that I can pick up, you know, turn around, move it and show you things. Well, in this case, as per the title, we have stuff that's uh, affixed uh, pretty steadily uh, to a wall and, you know, even with my gorilla powers, I won't be moving the walls around. So, I mean, probably less interesting in terms of, or even less interesting in terms of videography. Now, second thing kind of connected to that is that half of the things here um, that I'm presenting have a portrait aspect ratio, so are basically taller than wider. And, you know, with uh, 1080p, white screen, you know, we have eyes. Uh, our eyes are in like in a horizontal line, not vertical, etc., etc. It makes the stuff uh, unpleasant, I would say, to film because, you know, most of the stuff, like two thirds of what you see is irrelevant to the thing I'm showing. And, you know, other concerns like personal information, you know, I have my calendar, my whole whiteboard and stuff. But yeah, I mean, just saying that this is something that bothers me a little. And uh, if you don't like it as well, then, well, what can I say? You know, we're unhappy. And the last thing is that I've actually decided to film this at 25 uh, frames per second. Uh, not like usually when I do like 50, 50 frames per second for actually no reason because, you know, serendipity is a thing and it just came to my attention in some basically unrelated YouTube videos that people started talking about it. And I mean, from what I'm doing, I'm not doing dance TikToks or anything which has like fast motion in it. So 50 frames per second, that's basically wasting bandwidth space, etc, etc. And my stupid old barely working gaming rig could probably use any and all help possible. So yeah, I mean, if you can see a difference, if you think uh, 50 frames or 50 FPS, 50 Hertz is something that is actually worth it, then please do tell. I don't think I will be personally seeing, seeing any difference uh, between those two modes. Okay, I think that's uh, enough of uh, talking and so uh, let's uh, go. Project number 28, Logi Remote Shelf from December of 2021, which means that I've been using this for over three years without any issues. Now, the Logi part stands for the fact that the pack is not a pack, it's a remote control for a 2.1 speaker set from Logitech, so it's nice because it's wireless and this has two functions, you know, like you spin it for volume control and then you press it for mute and unmute. But this video is not about the speakers, it's about things that I've made. And this little custom shelf unit, um, PVC, 4mm thick, natural rubber, um, and, you know, the one that I've featured in other videos, uh, it's like an automotive uh, insulator, like uh, vibration and sound. In any case, I think I've managed to get the circle cut out quite nicely. So, uh, you know, it keeps the pack in place, it doesn't move in any direction, while still having enough clearance uh, here for the thing to spin freely. And yeah, this has um, a diode that you can actually see when you're like sitting down. Um, and the last part of the construction, uh, this uh, PVC profile, which, you know, like goes to the bottom. It's all glued, uh, cyanoacrylate, I believe. Um, the mat, probably some 3M gel glue, all this uh, pantacolitis stuff. So, uh, yeah, two fasteners just to mount it to the wall. And the wall here is the Soviet rebound concrete, which means it's uh, bomb proof, basically. Now, given that I have my measuring device, we can estimate, approximate it. So, yeah, 10 centimeters this way and 8 centimeters this way. And I think that way there will be like a centimeter and a half. Let's let's put it like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's a really nice thing. I mean, 
even though it's relatively flimsy, you know, you cannot go gorilla on that. I mean, if you want to mute, you cannot just smash it. You need to keep it from like the bottom side. But then again, three years uh, with me and it's perfectly fine. It doesn't even sag not noticeably, apologies. So a pretty cool thing. And yeah, it makes it like, you know, this whole wireless idea even better than having this, you know, like always taking precious space on the bench. Uh, some additional details worth uh, noting is that uh, the sides, they are black even though the PVC is uh, very white. I've just uh, painted them with an oil marker, so a very quick job and the bottom is white. But, you know, like for me the aesthetic stuff is, uh, it only matters if I'm looking at the thing daily, which is obviously the case here. And then uh, mostly only the stuff that I actually see, so... Um, all the edges from the sides and even I believe uh, the screws were painted with the same oil marker and at least with this shot you can see that you know like the LED if you're sitting like where I'm sitting which is even lower than the camera it's even like better uh, well more visible and you actually want to be able to see that because when the, this is like obviously has batteries inside uh, I use rechargeable so when this uh, gets to like low energy it will just blink this uh, LED so you need to have some way to see it. Project number uh, 34, custom magnetic bar from uh, May 2023. Another construction which is exactly the same materials as the previous one, but you see that's the whole point, it's the utility. You have uh, flexibility and utility out of you know, couple of materials and you can do quite a lot of stuff with them. So this is uh, positively magnetic and uh, specifically designed just for these three things. So my uh, PosiDrive uh, screwdrivers, this is I think PZ2 and PZ1 and those uh, small scissors which come very handy and yeah, I mean you even can see the date of when this was completed. Uh, I don't really like the fact that I've put it here, but hey, you know, you, I learn as I go. So, but yeah, speaking about the thing, so the construction is that uh, you have this, again, a natural rubber mat, and there's a thicker layer, and then there's like a base plate again from PVC, and maybe you will be able to see it, there's a screw, so I've specifically like done this sort of a of an ear so that you don't see it when you're sitting down but you still have access to it and again oil a black oil marker just painted you know like to make it nicer and yet this uh, front mat goes a bit lower than uh, the inside and now the magnetism is provided of course uh, via the uh, neodymium magnets so i believe there's like two here two another pair so one, two, one, two, and probably like one and one here, but to be honest, I don't remember. I mean, it's uh, been, well, not, e not a year yet, but, you know, I do a lot of stuff, so I don't remember the details. But in any case, as you can see, it works. And I really like the fact that this mat, I mean, it gets the shape of the stuff. It's like being pushed and just conforms to it. So it's, you know, like, uh, I wouldn't be really have any easy way of do it like specifically on my own to you know have like a blow molded casing and uh, this kind of makes it work similar way like you can see the profile of the scissors so they pretty much always go in the same position and that makes me very happy i like this uh, sort of uh, small little details so yeah what more again screwed to the concrete here I'm pretty sure there are just like those two screws. I don't think there's anything on the bottom. Again, very solid. Um, another thing that, you know, it's one of those great projects because you forget it. You forget that it's there. You know, you just need a small scissors, you know, just move your hand. You don't even look at it because, you know, it's muscle memory after about a year. So, yeah, and uh, simple construction. I mean, with the magnets, uh, I remember that I had some like problems in terms of uh, the idea of uh, how many will I need versus the reality 
And again, neodymium magnets, expensive, so we're always trying to use as few as possible. But my general thinking now is that if you can, you probably should uh, add a little bit more. As in, having a little more strength in terms of the magnetism is probably going to be better than having just enough or like barely enough. In any case, I think this actually was worse in the beginning when the mat was fresh and you know like straight. Once it actually, you know, like squeezed itself, now the stuff is closer to the magnet, so probably maybe maybe I was wrong and it's just a single magnet, like one, two, three. It's not impossible knowing myself. But yeah, so it's a thing that you know, like with this, it works perfectly fine. I have a vague recollection that in the beginning I was kind of like, yeah, maybe it's a failure, maybe not, but uh, apparently it isn't. Now that's a very focused uh, view and uh, yeah, measuring device, approximator, let's use it as we have it. So 15 uh, centimeters uh, this way and approximately 8 centimeters, but again the plate behind is probably like 2 centimeters uh, shorter. So it's going to probably be like, you know, like six centimeters. So yeah, not a lot of material and yeah, you can... Magnetism, it's magic. And now arguably the coolest uh, project, or at least cool coolest looking one when you have uh, stuff on the shelves. And also one that's the most difficult to film because of the aspect ratios. I'm talking about this uh, custom shelving unit. Uh, so that was uh, project number 58. Uh, and it only has the name in Polish, Wieszak na Konsolki. <laughs> Apologies, I guess. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a hanger for uh, retro stupid consoles. And it's uh, from uh, September of uh, last year. And uh, I won't be removing the console, sorry again, this is not about the consoles, it's just too much hassle. And no, it doesn't mean that I do not trust uh, this thing to hold them, it holds them perfectly fine. And, uh, or maybe, you know, I will at least try. Ah, you know, like, I'm designing this stuff and uh, I should be trusting my work, otherwise, ah. Uh, I would be doing a crappy job. So yeah, now we can focus on the thing. Uh, it's uh, MDF, uh, bamboo, and uh, PVA glue, and cyanoacrylate glue. <laughs> yes, uh, I mean, if you're looking for the bamboo, uh, the lip here, that's actually a bamboo stick, you know, like a skewer. Uh, <laughs> for your shish kebab and stuff like that. So it's glued like to the front of each of the shelves. And again, this, uh, most of the work was with the painting and coating. Cause again, this is a thing that has to look nice. And uh, yeah, so a proper primer, again, a couple of layers of ma Malta uh, Blanco and uh, acrylic varnish matte. Uh, Cause I don't like glossy stuff. Uh, I think it's, a bit obnoxious, but uh, in terms, you know, like of mechanical strength, you know, the PVA glue, which is like on the side of the actual side of the shelf, that's mostly for locating the stuff. The structural integrity is of the thick CA glue that's on both sides. And this kind of creates this sort of a leap. It's like, a, it's a triangle here, basically. There's like a face here which is all made out of glue. And this is surprisingly strong, at least from my experience. I mean, those consoles are relatively light, but this one is made out of uh, actual metal. I think it would weigh, I would say a couple hundred grams, maybe like quarter of a kilogram, so like half a pound, probably less. But, you know, again, this is not a gorilla proof stuff. You're not going to be throwing things on that, but, uh, it definitely holds the consoles in place. They look very nice. They are like easy to access. And uh, yeah, I mean like the leap again for like the stuff not to actually s uh, slide or fall down. Even if there's like some vibration though, thankfully I'm not in a place with uh, earthquakes. But you know, sometimes like big track or whatever, you know, you have to think about this stuff uh, earlier. So yeah, MDF, bamboo, CA glue, 
conceptually very simple, simple to make, you know, again, four holes, also countersunk because of the, well, not perfectly, but well enough. And yeah, what's there to more to do this? So let's measure it. It's actually kind of larger than the rest of the stuff. So, 42 centimeters. Yeah, I mean, that actually reminds me of a thing. 42 centimeters, why? Because European paper sizes, A3. This is the size that I get my MDF, which means that, you know, like one, like this dimension is like as the plate, as the sheet came, it's, it's like that. So the only cutting was on, to get it shorter on this side. And this is 13 and a half centimeters, if we trust my measurement. And I believe this will be like the shelves about two centimeters, about three centimeters, yeah, including the bamboo lip. So like three centimeters this way. And uh, yeah, I mean, a pretty nice looking thing. We'll see how it will age. I hope it will be nice. And uh, yeah, while I'm here, let me try getting stuff back in order. Yes, that's as satisfying as you think it is. And the last but not least, project number 67, a mug wall plate uh, from November 2023, which means this is not even half a year old. Now, this one is conceptually extremely simple it's a piece of steel and you might not be thinking that this is much of a project but i believe it is first of all you need to know what kind of steel and where to get it and if you're getting industrial steel you need to process it because you get it in a pretty uh, rough uh, shape uh, including some surface rust and it being over dimensions and also being soaking in this like really awful chemicals uh, that are supposed to prevent rust. Well, they do, I guess, a good enough job. So what makes it magnetic? Well, it's steel, it's a low carbon steel. This is this uh, S235 high impact uh, uh, steel plates. And I believe this is two millimeters uh, thick. And I got it like in a square shape. So just, you know, like to fit this place because Again, this is the sort of a space here where you cannot really put any sensible, say, shelving stuff, but you're still having space. So why not do a custom uh, magnetic uh, plate? And yeah, I did actually do a search on like, you know, Allegro, Amazon, the usual suspects for this kind of sized magnetic board, like whiteboard, dry erase. And obviously I have found uh, exactly nothing. So this is basically too small for uh, the commercial products that are easily available. So conceptually extremely simple, but also useful. So, you know, if you have stuff with uh, magnets, you can just put it in. And I still have like half of it empty for whenever I have, uh, you know, any feeling of adding more stuff. And yeah, I mean, you know, you need to, but first of all, degrease it, you need to cut it to, uh, to size, you need to drill holes, you need to countersink them because, you know, the sort of uh, concrete screws. And uh, this one is actually very well, let's say, painted and well, by, by well, I mean that I've actually done the sanding, then done the primer, then done, I think, three coats. And this is my, another very like, oh, the color that I like a lot, uh, it's not white, it's Malta, Malta Blanco, so like Malta and white, which is slightly of color, slightly yellowish, but very subtly. So yeah, like three coats of paint and then finally three layers of like acrylic uh, varnish 
a coating like matte one so I'm expecting this you know like to last very long in terms of color and uh, the surface and it's nice to touch so you know even a simple thing you are not going to do it like in two hours no way it's like you're gonna be doing this over like a week or a couple of weeks depending on how busy you are and uh, yeah so this stuff is not magnetic it's just like uh, it's what ferromagnetic basically magnets stick to it it itself is not magnetic just to make that obvious and uh, yeah it's uh, really uncomfortable because you know like the aspect ratio of the video and the aspect ratio of this uh, do not go hand in hand but uh, i guess uh, at least you're getting slightly more context of you know like where it is in, in space and last but not least the approximator i think this should be like spot on centimeters so we have 15 this way i'll probably need more this way it's not as easy as i think it should be 25 it is 25. 25 by 15. Yep, and two millimeters thick. 